This video is from a diehard Cleveland Browns fan. And these are all my speculations. These are everything I think that's going on here. But I want to start with how Bill Belichick saved the NFL with one trade. Okay? One trade. A trade that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense until you put it into a broader perspective. And this is the true genius of Bill Belichick. And believe me, as a Browns fan, for me to say that Bill Belichick's a genius, that's tough. But he is a genius on a lot of levels. You know, he's been to the Super Bowl, what, seven times? He's won five times. Belichick, you know, he sits at, at the lectern and mumbles. Maybe he's maybe somewhere on the, you know, on the, uh, you know, the Osberger um, spectrum, you know, um, high functioning Osberger. I don't know what Belichick is. He's a savant. But whatever he is, Belichick is a genius. And, he, and he's shown it. He's a football genius. But he's also the guy, I think, saved the NFL. Why is that? Why did Belichick save the NFL with one trade? One weird trade for a second round pick. He traded Jimmy Garoppolo and he bypassed the Cleveland Browns and he sent them he sent him and this is my opinion Belichick sent Jimmy Garoppolo to the 49ers. Now we all know what happened this past year. We had massive controversy, massive controversy. We've had controversy where you know, fans have left the football NFL in droves. We have people burning their jackets, people burning their season tickets, uh, people in the military saying, hey, I'll never watch another football game again. And Belichick fixed that with one trade. How did he do it? How did, how did Belichick do it? He traded Garoppolo to the 49ers. Now, think about it, fans. Think about it for a second. Colin Kaepernick. Now, I'm not here to take sides on this. Okay, I'm trying to keep it in the sporting realm. But the, but the controversy that got injected into the NFL from the outside, got injected the NFL and boiled over and fans left and stadiums were empty and, and people are losing money and people not, don't want to watch football anymore. <coughs> it all started in San Francisco. It started in San Francisco with Colin Kaepernick. He sat on the bench. Later on, he knelt. Look, you're, you're right to, uh, to your right of your expression, I fully endorse. I don't agree with it. I think it's disrespectful. But hey, that's your business. But the problem is the NFL became embroiled in this. And, and people hated the NFL and they don't like the NFL. Now you're Belichick sitting up there in Boston. And you see that your legacy is being trashed by forces you can't control. You have seven appearances, five Super Bowl rings. Five, right? Belichick's got five. You're, you're a genius. And you know you're a genius, but no one will, no one really respects Belichick. You, you know, deep down, we look at Belichick at the podium and we kind of laugh at him. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So what Belichick did, he said, I've got to stop this. And I'm going to trade. I'm just, And he's mad at Kraft and Brady for another issue. We'll get into that. He said, I'm going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm going to trade him. I'm going to trade him to the 49ers. And guess what, fans? Jimmy Garoppolo's taken the 49ers the last six games you know it's been 6 and 0 the 49ers are 6 and 0 he beat the rams now the rams are the leader in that division and the 49ers aren't going anywhere this season but garoppolo went in there and the 49ers were on track to be the next cleveland browns of 0 and 16 and jimmy garoppolo in my opinion single-handedly fixed the 49ers now think about it do you hear any more about the football controversy anymore? It's been squashed. Now, of course, the media is, you know, the NFL has done that because they're losing money. But I think, in fact, Belichick put Garoppolo there. I think he placed him there. And now the 49ers, you're thinking back to the, this, the, the halcyon days of Joe Montana and Steve Young. The 49ers are fixed. Fans, real football fans are not coming back. Not people who want to take a political stance on either side of the spectrum. And we're not going to hear to talk about that today. We're not here to talk about that. We're talking about the genius of Belichick of sending Garoppolo to the 49ers, and he basically sealed the wound that had, be, that had, that had been injected in football starting in San Francisco. That's a controversial statement, but that's what Belichick did. That's what he did. He sent Garoppolo there because he was told, and we know this, we know that uh, Belichick was told by Kraft. Kraft said, because... Because from what we can gain, gather from what ESPN's telling us, ESPN's telling us that 
it seems like Tom Brady was upset that Garoppolo was there because Garoppolo is a definite threat. And he's not a threat. He's like Steve Young to Joe Montana. Brady's in his 40s. It's time to move on. The day is coming when Brady won't be able to play. He's one hit, one concussion away, and he's out. Belichick, we Brown fans know. We all love Bernie Kosar. Bernie Kosar was our idol. He's still our idol. And Belichick fired him. He benched him and got rid of him. We know that what Belichick will do. He'll take Brady out. You know, even though Brady has five Super Bowl rings, Belichick don't care. Browns fans, we know. (laughs) Belichick does not care. He doesn't care. He's Belichick. He's here to win. Belichick's the ultimate red pill coach. He's not thinking about fan loyalty and fuzzy feelings. Belichick doesn't have a fuzzy feeling in his body. We all know this. We're from Cleveland. We know what Belichick is. He's there to win. He's not here to feel good. That's, he did the same thing to us with, with Bernie, and he was right. Belichick's a red pill coach. He's not a blue pill, compassionate, fuzzy, fuzzy wuzzy coach. Hell no, it's Belichick. Come on, get real. So, so when Kraft went to Belichick, because Brady went to Kraft, Mr. Kraft, and said, I don't like this. I don't like this, Joe, this Garoppolo guy. He's, he's taking me off my game. And, of course, the Kraft family's always been loyal to their quarterbacks. Drew Bledsoe, everybody who's been around football, we know who Drew Bledsoe is, and they were royal, loyal to Drew Bledsoe to a fault. Same thing. Kraft's loyal to Brady. Got to get him out of here. Look at Jimmy Garoppolo. He, he, he beat the Rams 34-13. to That was not possible with Colin Kaepernick. That wasn't possible until Jimmy Garoppolo went there. So in one fell swoop, what Belichick has done, what he's done, because this is Belichick we're talking about. He got mad because Brady went around him. And you know if you go around Belichick, he's going to hate you forever. And he's like, okay, you want to play that way? I'll play that way. So he traded and got nothing for Garoppolo. And he fixed this, this, this wound that had been injected into the NFL by fixing the 49ers. Belichick fixed the 49ers. He saw the storied halcyon days of the 49ers being just trash. And that's indirectly trashing Belichick. And if you indirectly trash Belichick, you're going to go down. Belichick's like, I've spent my life making the NFL great. And now these people are making the NFL a trash and people hate the NFL. I've got to fix it because it's about me. It's always about Belichick. Belichick's the ultimate narcissist. We all know that. That's why he wins. So he fixed the 49ers. He sends Jimmy over there and says, hey, I fixed the 49ers. And guess what? You don't hear about this kneeling controversy anymore. It's been squashed. It's finally, even the media, the NFL, Trump, all this stuff, it's gone now. The NFL is being repaired. And Belichick had a big piece of that because now the 49ers are a winning team. And people are more interested in a winning football team than a political statement. So that's what happened there. That's what Belichick did. That's why he traded Garoppolo for, like, nothing. Just nothing. So now, let's enter, let's enter the next controversy we got going on. Let's look at this TB12. Okay, let's look at TB12. So, Brady, is, Brady and his trainer are pushing this. Uh, Alex Guerrero writes statement after report of Patriots issues. So, this guy here, let's get a picture up for you here. And, you know, so Brady's got into his peak performance, okay? Uh, this type of band training, this is kind of from the 80s. Um, this was kind of in the martial arts. This is these oblique angles. Uh, I can't remember the martial artist who started these oblique angles. This is what Brady does, all this type of training. See, this is, so Brady's into all this high, high tech training. Great, great for Tom Brady. But basically his trainer, this guy, this trainer here, uh, his name is uh, Guerrero. This guy and Belichick get into it. I can't really find a good picture. I see all these pictures of Brady. This might be the guy here. Oh, is this an uh, author? I don't know. Well, anyway, so the developer, the, the co-developer with Tom Brady of TB12, and I'm not pushing TB12, he was walking around and he was trying to talk other Patriots players around Belichick's back 
to join this TB12 program with Tom Brady. Well, you know Belichick, he ain't going to take that crap. There ain't no way. He wants his medical staff. Again, this is a red pill guy. This is a scientific guy. This is a strategy guy. This is a computer guy. This is an analytics guy. He ain't going to listen to all this holistic mumbo jumbo. He's going to listen to the real deal. So Belichick gets mad and says, that guy's off the plane. He kicks him out of the locker room, and this big feud starts. So now Tom Brady, you know, he's all upset. And, you know, so he probably goes to Kraft and says, hey, I, I want, you know, I, I want to be, uh, you know, you know, I, I don't want to be replaced. And, and, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo is, is, is making me feel bad. So Belichick's told, okay, you got to get rid of him. So Belichick, like I said, he goes in there and says, okay, I'll do it. So why does this have anything to do with the Browns fans? For Kraft, Brady, and Belichick, is this the beginning of the end? I think it is. I really think it is. This is by Seth w Wickersham. I really think it is. I really think it is, fans. I really think, as a Browns fan, I could tell you something I would never believe I would have told you before. I would never would have believed it. But there is there is a weird outside possibility that Belichick could return to Cleveland. Weird. Uh, yeah, slight. You know, maybe he'll go to the Giants. But I actually think Belichick might come back to the Browns. He might come back to the Browns where he started. He'll, he'll come back to where he started and finish off here. It's possible. Now, this may be overblown, but I don't think so. I think when you trade a, a player of the stature of Garoppolo for, for so low, you really are sticking it to the man. So Belichick stuck it to the man. He's like, okay, you want me to get rid of Garoppolo? I'll get rid of him. And he just got rid of him for a second round draft. He didn't send Garoppolo. Again, notice how I'm saying this. He sent. Belichick sent Garoppolo to, for the 49ers. He seals that wound. He fixes the 49ers in one fell swoop. The 49ers are back. There's the story uh, history of the 49ers has been repaired because it's really been, you know, I'm sorry, but a lot of people don't like the controversy that got injected into the NFL. And Belichick has quieted that down. Now the 49ers are winning. Real fans are coming back. You don't hear all this hatred against the NFL as you did. Belichick fixed that with one trade. He's a genius. I hate to say it. He's just a genius. He's just a genius. So now I think that Belichick is probably on his way out of the out of the Patriots because he's like, you know, he's like, as usual, you know, Belichick's this fuddy duddy old guy. You know how Belichick is, and Belichick says, no one, you know, no one, no one likes me. No one respects me. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't really get, you know, anyone to respect me. You know, no one respects me. You know. There's Belichick. That's not a face you can love. That's not a person you can love. But he's a genius. Widely considered one of the best coaches in football history. He's, he's not widely considered. He is the best football coach in history. Bill Belichick was born in Nashville, Tennessee. Now this is important. Jimmy Haslam is from Nashville. Is, he's from Tennessee. Peyton Manning played at the University of Tennessee. So here's a scenario that I think is building up, fans. I really think this scenario could happen. I don't know if Jimmy Haslam is smart enough to pull it off, but this could happen. As we saw, Belichick was born in Nashville, Tennessee, 1952, son of a longtime college coach. By the 1980s, he was defensive coordinator for the New York Giants. After a rocky stint as head coach of the Cleveland Browns in the early 1990s, he was hired in 2000. He's got five. So what I think could happen since Jimmy Haslam and D. Haslam, D. Haslam is Jimmy Haslam's wife. Jimmy Haslam is from Tennessee. Peyton Manning is from Tennessee. Belichick is from Tennessee. I, I see a weird scenario. I, I, I see a weird convergence happening where Belichick is like, you know, no one appreciates me. I've, I brought him five Super Bowls, and when I say it's time for this quarterback to leave, it's time for him to leave, and they said, nope, you're going to keep Brady. And, and we're, going to, we're not going to go through that Bernie Kosar controversy here. You're going to just live with it, Belichick. And Belichick's like, no way. I'm a five-time five winner. I'm a seven-time appearance at the Super Bowl. Ain't no way I'm going to take that from Kraft. You know, Kraft's starting to crap on me like everybody else has in my life. So I see Belichick from Tennessee, by the way, with Jimmy Haslam from Tennessee, and maybe with Peyton Manning, who's played for the University of Tennessee, that these three guys could rebuild the Browns. It could happen. I know it's weird, I know it's way out there, but I think it's more realistic than we think now. And a lot of these guys, like Peyton Manning, Bill Belichick, 
you know, they see all this controversy that got injected into the NFL, and it's damaging their reputation. So if you're Peyton Manning or Joe Montana or Bill Belichick or even Tom Brady, you don't want all this controversy. You don't want people hating the sport. You don't want people hating you. they got to turn it around. So like I said, first thing that Belichick did is he fixed, he fixed football. He fixed the major problem of an injection of political controversy into the NFL. He fixed it by sealing the wound or cauterizing the wound in, in San Francisco by getting Jimmy Garoppolo there. That guy is a genius. He's, Belichick's just a weird genius. Okay, He's just a weird genius. So now that's fixed. So now Belichick's mad at Kraft. He's mad at Brady. He's mad at that trainer with this TB12 thing. And now Belichick's going to say, you know, I'm from Tennessee. He's going to probably talk to Jimmy Haslam. And if Peyton Manning and Jimmy Haslam approach, if, 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 Jimmy Haslam, G, if Jimmy and D. Haslam could get Peyton Manning on board, and then they together approach Belichick, who's probably getting dissatisfied with what happened to him this year, he could conceivably come to the Browns. I understand these are outside of the realm of possibility uh, musings of an 0-16 fan. I get that. But I think it's realistic that something like this is going to happen. And I do think it's realistic that Belichick fixed the 49ers by sending Garoppolo there. And you don't hear it. It's gone. The, the, you know, the kneeling controversy, the national anthem controversy, it's gone. Now, again, I know the NFL, the mass media, a lot of people put the tamp down on that. we got Trump tweeting. we got all this stuff going on. But suddenly that has been tamped down because people see the brand was being trashed. And as the brand was trashed, so were the reputations of all these storied players. Now, you may not be an NFL fan, you don't care. But I think Belichick did fix the 49ers on purpose with Garoppolo's trade. He put the new Joe Montana back out there, and now West Coast football is coming back to life. You've got the Rams, you got the 49ers. All right? So you've got the old guard teams are back. The Raiders, you know, they're going to move to Los Angeles. I'm sorry, Las Vegas. They're going to move to Las Vegas. They've already moved to Los Angeles. They're moving to Las Vegas. I actually think that's a good move because you have Los Angeles, you have San Francisco. you got plenty of football there. And then the Raiders go to Vegas. Everyone travels to Vegas, so there's a football team there. So when you travel to Vegas, you can see an NFL game. I think that's actually a good move on the NFL's part. I know the Oakland fans aren't happy, but you know they can still be Raider Nation's Raider Nation, and they have the 49ers right across the bay. So you know it's up to you. So... You know, with all this going on, you know, I think you can see this what's going to happen in football. So 2018 is going to be a really weird year in football. I'll finish up on this. One, Belichick has fixed the NFL. Thank you, Bill Belichick. He fixed the 49ers and brought back West Coast style football. Jimmy Garoppolo, Joe, you know, will probably become the new Joe Montana, the new Steve Young. He took a team that was going nowhere, it's going down the same realm of reality, the Browns of 0-16. He took a team, and he's been 6-0 in his last six starts. 6-0 and on a team that was in total disarray, that was at the, it was at the center of the maelstrom of this political controversy that got injected into the game. And I think the, the political controversy needs to be out of the game. You know, there's plenty of venues for that to be. Sports where we want to focus on sports and the excellence of sports. Belichick fixed that. Belichick's dissatisfied with this TB12 guy, Tom Brady going around his back, Kraft just saying, hey, you do what you're told, Belichick, get him out of here. Belichick being a good soldier, he got him out of there, but he got him out of there Belichick style. So now Belichick's sitting there thinking, where am I going to go? But remember, Belichick's from Tennessee. Peyton Manning played for the University of Tennessee. Jimmy Haslam of the Cleveland Browns is from Tennessee. There's a Tennessee connection coming at us. I really think this is a prediction that we're going to see either Belichick or Peyton Manning or some other defectors from the Patriots coming to Cleveland to rebuild Cleveland. What's going to happen to Hugh Jackson? I don't know. If Hugh Jackson goes 0-4, he's gone. All right, And it could be, it depends how, how upset Belichick gets, because Belichick could get pretty upset. And if Belichick gets upset and says, hey, I've had enough of this, then he could come to the Browns. He may go to the Giants. I actually think he'll come to the Browns. So I'd like to know your thoughts on this, going down the rabbit hole here. But it, it's going to be a really weird year for football. It's going to be a really weird year for football. And Belichick, 
like I said, he's getting up there in years, but Belichick's not going to give it up. See, you and I, we'd, ha we'd win five Super Bowls. We're like, hey, I'll live on that reputation for the rest of my life. Belichick's not like that. He's just not like that. He, 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 it's the system. It's the process. It's the journey. That's what Belichick's all about. He can't rest. He's got to keep going. I can see Belichick saying, hey, I'm going to go to another team, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five football uh, Super Bowls with that team. And then no one will ever catch my record. I'll be so far out there that no one can catch me. That's where Belichick's mind is. So anyway, I think we have a Tennessee connection coming to Cleveland. I think it could happen. I think the Browns are 0-16. The, the next team that Belichick... And, and watch for some kind of weird play where Belichick helps the Browns. I think that could actually happen. I know he's got a lot of animosity towards the Browns and Browns fans. But I actually think Belichick, he, he might do it. Anyway, I'd like to know your thoughts on this. 0-16 is a terrible place to be. So when you're at 0-16, you, you grasp on to anything. But I'm telling you, Belichick fixed the 49ers. He stopped the national anthem controversy. He started getting the political process out of football. And like I said, he was just like, hey, we're here to play football. We're not here to introduce TB12 programs into football. He wanted to have his medical team take care of his political, his players and not some guy trying to push some kind of you know, uh, new age uh, medicine. Hey, if you're into TB12, great. If it works for you, great. Belichick, he's not going to go along with that. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Go Browns.